two single gals <laughs> taking the city. <laughs> to sit down and talk about living in San Francisco the past year. So today I thought it'd be fun to sit down with my roommates and kind of just reflect on our one year living in San Francisco, our one year in review. I recognize that there's a lot of people moving to new cities and there's so much to consider when choosing a city. This is just our opinion. Obviously there's many other people out there with different experiences. Let's start with housing. If you've seen the apartment tour on my channel, you have seen that we got an incredible steal for this apartment. And I've, I did a whole video on the apartment hunt process as well. So I'm not gonna go too in depth about that, but you really have two options when it comes to where to live in San Francisco. You could live in kind of like an older, more charming Victorian type house, um, kind of like we have with our apartment or like a par older apartment buildings that you know still have that charm like they're like the super old elevators and just kind of units that are a little bit older or you could go for a more renovated apartment that you know is like newer and just very modern i kind of prefer what we have honestly i feel like the i don't know what you say the majority of people live in like places like ours like I don't know a lot of people that live in like brand new, like modern buildings. Right. No, it's more in walk-ups. Yeah. Walk up buildings. Our apartments for sure not renovated, but not like planning, Lydia. We love we love our landlord. We're never leaving. We so. just got brand new washer dryer though, so Yeah, we are living in like okay, so that's another thing and I talk about it in my apartment hunt video, but most places don't have washers and dryers, most places don't have parking. Um, those are very just standard things across the board if you find a place that offers one or the other like that is a luxury so as you may know we live in the marina um almost in cow hollow but i would say like marina cow hollow north beach russian hill is more like young professionals in their 20s or maybe like young families it's a little bit like fratty and it's like college but now you all have jobs again i talk about this in the apartment hunt video but those are kind of like the four areas that we wanted to live in when we were apartment hunting um just because that's what we like there's really a different neighborhood for everyone there's like the mission and hate which is a little bit more edgy and alternative if that's more your style i would say like pack heights and knob hill is a great location to live if you work in like Fida or downtown, but you don't want to necessarily live there. Um, Taylor, I, so Taylor actually used to live, this is her second apartment in San Francisco. She used to live in Lower Knob Hill? Yes, Lower Knob Hill. Um, I lived like less than a 10 minute walk to work. That's why I chose to live there. It was really close to Union Square. Like I didn't know San Francisco very well before moving here. And so I thought, you know, oh, that's great. You can walk to work. And I mean, first of all, there it was like super touristy. There weren't a lot of people my age around there. I also think like a lot of the businesses there and like yeah. shops just really cater to like the work week. Totally. So everything was like yes. dead on the weekend. Yeah, right? on the weekend it's like yeah, kind of a ghost town besides like the tourists that are there. I would a hundred percent rather commute to work than live close to work. Around there also is the Tenderloin and that's not really the nicest area. Yes. So definitely don't walk through that alone at night. <laughs> there's the Castro, which is the capital for LGBTQ. And then there's kind of like the Sunset Richmond, which is actually where my parents grew up. So it's much more family oriented and residential. And it's kind of like the suburbs of San Francisco. So transportation in the city, I would say you either walk, you Uber, you take the bus, or you drive. I have a car and I actually pay to park in a garage. That's just what works for me. Emma parks on the street, Taylor doesn't have a car. Parking can be kind of a pain depending where you're going in the city. So I know you have a parking permit that you just park on the street and like, I guess that really depends where you live and like finding parking. Yeah, well you can get a residential parking permit and it's like, $150 a year and you can park in any of the timed zones so if it says two hour parking you can park there as long as you want you just have to move when they're doing street cleaning which is like twice a month 
but it's kind of nice. That's pretty good. Actually. Yeah, it's like if, yeah, it's yeah. very very cheap, and you basically get to park wherever you want. It's not downtown or anything, but it's in these areas like North Beach, all the. I think it's actually by zip code. Yeah. Um, it's like our friend Alex had to get a different one for North Beach, but it's by. So like, I would get one for like the Marina Cow Hollow area. Yeah, and there's like a different depending where you live. There's like a certain amount that you get per household, things like that, but. Yeah, like the 100, 150 per year is a much cheaper option than, for example, I pay like over $200 a month to park in a garage. So it's really like there's options for everyone. The car will be fine on the street as long as you don't leave anything in it. I was just going to say, knock on wood, <laughs> there hasn't really been, and I haven't noticed any issues either. I know, honestly, that's one of the biggest things is like no matter what area you're in, if you leave a backpack in the back seat or just honestly anything visible, like there's so many smash and grabs that people will just like break it, grab whatever and leave. So yeah, honestly, if you just put it in your trunk where no one can see it, like you're totally fine. Yeah. How do you feel about not having a car? I have roommates who have a car, so like when we go grocery shopping, that's fine. I don't go into work every day. But you would take the um, but bus. I've, but I've gone in, yeah, and I take the bus to get there. There are honestly like a ton of bus stops, at least close to where we live, like 20, 25 minute ride. And then I've dropped off pretty much like right by my office. The bus is really your only option. Like we do have- Right, meetings. transportation's not great. In yeah, it's yeah. definitely not. Like obviously the bus is like fine and easy and whatever, but that's really your only option. Like, I would say for most places, we like we have so much around us that we go to that we walk a lot of places, and mm -hmm. the city is pretty walkable, um, minus like the massive mountains that are everywhere because there's so many hills everywhere. Do you think having a car is necessary in San Francisco? Depends on where you live, where you live in the city. Russian Hill, that area, you wouldn't need a car because there's you're right near all the grocery stores, you're right in the middle of all the restaurants mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. But if, if you live out in like Sunset. Or like that direction, yes. and like yes, you definitely would be okay. Great. San Francisco is not warm. We have, except right now because it's October. <laughs> except today. <laughs> except yeah. today because it's October. And the other day when it was yeah. like eighty-five degrees. Yeah. Well, we're currently in San Francisco summer, which is September October, but besides those two months, really the city is like a solid like sixty. 55. Yeah, I would say 50 to 60. Yeah, we have this good old pal named Carl. We <laughs> call the fog old. here Carl. So if you like go on Instagram, there's like Carl the fog. And really that's just because there's always so much fog in San Francisco that locals decided to give him a name. It's just permanent. Yeah, it's so. always here. If you go see the Golden Gate Bridge, you probably won't oh see it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Honestly, most days it would be like a August day, like everywhere else in like California is like so sunny and so nice. We walked down to the Golden Gate Bridge. It's just fog. You can't even see the bridge. <laughs> but also like the weather really changes like where you are in the city. So because we're on the water, it tends to be a little bit colder here versus like, I feel like the mission's a little bit warmer or like yeah. places that are more central in the city tend to be like a little bit warmer. Yeah, and they're really just like layers. Well, the I, weather can change really quickly. Yeah, I feel like you always need, for example, when I lived in Lower Knob Hill, I would like walk to work and it would be fine in the morning and then I leave and it's raining. Like, I feel like it's always just like, it might rain or it might sprinkle or like if you go out to dinner and when you leave, it's like fine. But then if you're sitting outside and you're there for two hours, it's like, like it's freezing. freezing yeah. Like you always want like, a code of some sort, I feel like, anywhere you go. Even if you think you won't need it, you probably will. Yeah, that's why going out here is hard because yeah. like you go inside to like a bar or like wherever you end up mm -hmm. and it's so hot inside, but the moment you step outside or like waiting in line outside, it's freezing. Yeah, I love San Francisco weather, but I'm from Minnesota, so. <laughs> yeah, I literally wear sweatshirts year round. Yeah. Taylor grew up with like four seasons in Minnesota. But yeah. Well, this event is like, what, 45 in, in the winter? Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, it's so cold. <laughs> so to us, that's pretty cool. Ability to make friends. Maybe I'm biased, 
but I like to think that it's a pretty friendly city. I think we're lucky. We went to Santa Clara, so the thing was to move to San Francisco. That was kind of like what a lot of people did. So we have a lot of like mutual friends here. We kind of have like a little bit mm -hmm. of an extended college community here. So I think a lot of people are friends with their college friends, kind of like that's where we yeah. are, or like their coworkers. I would say kind of like the two main yeah, I how people make friends here. Oh, there's so many like young professionals here, like chances are the people you work with are gonna be like around your age and have similar interests and probably live like near you. So I think like being friends with your coworkers is very common. It's like a very mutual friend city. Like yes. the actual city is not that big. And especially if you hang out mostly within whatever neighborhood you choose to live in, like it's pretty, like you'll cross paths with the same people. So it's very small, so like you end up like people that you know from that school or whatever, they know people that you know from work, like stuff like that. Oh my gosh, like the amount of people that, yeah, like just as you said, the amount of people that I maybe grew up with, because I grew up in the Bay Area, who knows someone who I worked with, who knows someone who I went to college with, like it is such a small community. And also it's just like so common to be like, hey, I'm having this thing on my rooftop, like, and you'll, <laughs> and like, you'll invite someone and they'll bring their roommates or they'll bring like their coworkers. Like it's just a very like mutual friend, inclusive city from my experience at least. Yeah, I would, I would agree, yeah. Cause it's like not weird when like you bring me places and like I don't know people or like, yeah, you know. Yeah, or if you have like your coworkers over at your house, that's not like weird. There's so many people around our age in the city too that it's just kind of like an easy thing to meet other people. Like if you're brand new to the city, like I would recommend living with roommates. A hundred percent. And how you can find roommates is so many people post on just like Facebook groups and I know there's one called like the SF crew and like different Facebook groups like that where, you know, they have an apartment and they have an open bedroom and that is like such a great way to kind of insert yourself into a friend group or um, to meet other people around your age and maybe get to know their coworkers or whatever. Let's get into like career and culture and kind of all that. I'm a stereotype and I work in tech just like many other people in San Francisco. Obviously it's very tech heavy and this is kind of like the heart of Silicon Valley is San Francisco and the South Bay. And you guys kind of work in like tech hybrid companies. Like they're fashion, but they're also tech. tech. I don't know, I, I feel like most of our friends work in tech and then like sales or finance within tech or within startups and. There's a pretty big like corporate retail here in this yeah. I would say too. I feel like it's very career focused. It's very, like you can feel like the Silicon Valley presence a little bit more. And like, I kind of like, I don't know about you guys, but like, I feel like there's always just, not like pressure, but like everyone just seems so successful in the city and like. People like to talk about work a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. a huge point of conversation. But I would also say it's like very like work hard, play hard. Like I feel like maybe that's just where we live. And this is kind of like the post college, like scene around here so i think it's a lot of people who put in the grind you know monday through friday and then have a lot of fun on the weekends agreed yeah yeah it's like the only thing going on in our lives like no one's married or has kids yeah. and just all we do is work and then just hang out with our friends yeah and that's all people do also maybe like why a lot of people talk about work is just there's so much networking because everyone mm -hmm. works within like similar industries but yeah. not at the same companies you always want to kind of get to know what other people are doing and where they're at in case you want to go over there and i feel like it's just a very like yeah who you know like get to know people totally jobs, if that makes sense i don't know let's chat nightlife so if you watched my vlog i'll i'll link it above we tried to go to a club in san francisco it was not it. Like, it was just really not the vibe. Sa it's not, <laughs> San Francisco's not a club scene. No, I was like, gonna say Santa Clara. San Francisco is that too. <laughs> a bar heavy city. Like, for the most part, you go to bars. Like, that's just, there's no clubs. I mean, there are clubs, but it's just like not really the vibe. Um, Especially in the places we go out. 
I think maybe like in the Castro it might be more club heavy. I don't know. I'm not sure. I feel like at least in the area that we are and the places mm -hmm. our friends go out, it, you only go out to bars. Yeah. The club that we went out to was in financial district. So it's just kind of like in a weird location. Like it's not really where locals go out. I would say that like the three main areas where people go out are the marina, which is kind of like where we live, um, North Beach and the Mission. So those are kind of like, I'm sure that there's other areas, but from what I've heard, we typically frequent North Beach and Marina, um, but I've also heard the Mission is a great scene. You can expect to pay $16 for a Long Island. Tell them your beer hack that you guys have. Yeah, well that's Emma's beer hack that I just steal. It's not really a hack, I just like beer. <laughs> well, I don't like hard alcohol. No, yeah, no, but, I really like hard alcohol. but I've just, like, I, I think that getting beer out is just like a good, it, it's, it's like a budget tip that Emma taught me and it's really just cause she likes beer, but. But it also is like a lot of good It's like alcohol. less than half the price half the time. So moral of the story okay. is pregame because you will be spending a lot of money on drinks at the bar. Like I think it is, and we'll, we'll go into kind of like cost of living and all of that in a little bit, but. Once you get into that, like, yeah, let's get a drink. And then, and then, and then, like, it's, and then you order food. So and then easy to drop. You so wake up the next money. morning and yeah. you're like, wow, like, you guys so much money. Yeah. yeah. You get hit with the Venmos. You're just like, yeah. it's not yeah. it. San Francisco has a ton of really good food. I feel like that's something that the city's kind of known for. Um, I think that, like there's just so many restaurants, there's food trucks, there's just, it really depends what you want. Like if you want Mexican food, you're going to go to the Mission. If you want Italian, you're going to go to North Beach. Like ramen, you're going to go to Japantown. Like there's so many different areas of the city where you can just yeah, get like known for phenomenal food. Yeah. yeah. And I think that has to do with the fact that the city is just very diverse, that there's just so much mm -hmm. like culture. culture and like that really ties into the food and it's phenomenal. What is everyone's favorite restaurant? Mama that you've at? Mama Noko. Okay, Mama Noko was phenomenal. Literally the best sushi I've ever had. I don't know. I don't eat out a lot, but I do like wild seed. Mm. I've only been there once, but it was really good. It's a vegan restaurant in it's the really marina. Also, Flor Flores. Oh, Flores. 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 I was going to so say that. Good. Flores. Those are the best margaritas I've ever had. Yes. I've absolutely. had every kind of margarita that they offer on that menu. Spicy, <laughs> mango, strawberry, original. I don't even know what else. Phenomenal. Absolutely. I also really like um, Chubby Noodle for brunch. It's like a really, it's kind of like family style. They'll bring everything out. Or China Live, which is also Asian fusion food. And it's also family style. So it's really good if you have a big group and um, you want to kind of just try a little bit of everything. I have been on a hunt for the best espresso martini in San Francisco. And I try them everywhere I go because I want to find somewhere better than Balboa Cafe. And I just have not. Like, I'm sorry, I have not found anything better than Balboa. So Agreed. go to Balboa in the marina, get an espresso martini, and your you life will be changed. Fast. This is not sponsored. <laughs> Something to be careful about is I would say like when we go out to dinner, mm -hmm. we expect like if you get like if you all share an appetizer, you get your meal, a drink. you get a drink, and like after tax and tip and all of that, you can expect to drop maybe like sixty dollars yeah. on dinner. I would say it's probably like the average of like yeah. what we get. So that's just something to keep in mind. Like we, this is like when you're like at a sit down restaurant, like um, yeah, going like, I'm to dinner go on a to Friday, dinner, like a, a nice dinner. Yeah. yeah. So just keep that in mind. Like that's something that like we've really had to or I had to really work on when I moved to the city is eating at home. Like I loved like just picking up food and bringing it home, but um, that can add up real quick in the city. So eat at home during the week and go out to restaurants on weekends because they're not cheap. <laughs> I feel like we, yeah, we cook at least five times a week. Yeah. Sometimes, honestly, I feel like we go out to dinner like Fridays or Saturdays, but yeah. I feel like most of the time we go out or we eat it's at like home one like night. Saturday. Yeah. That is a perfect segue into cost of living. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what I must say.
I've done some what I spend in a week, so that kind of gives some perspective on what a typical week in San Francisco looks like. But San Francisco is not cheap. The Bay Area is not cheap. Like that's not news to anyone. I think we are very, very lucky with our apartment because we got an absolute steal. I talk about how we pay like $12.50 each and then with utilities, it usually comes out to a little bit over $1,300, which is like, I don't think we could ever find that again in the city. Like we got so, so lucky. We got this in the middle of COVID and I would say most of our friends are spending anywhere from like $1,500 to $1,900 on rent to live with roommates and then like our friends who live alone or anything like that have their own place, have a one bedroom, they're paying like in the 2000s somewhere. So it is not cheap. We're lucky that, you know, a significant amount of our income is not going to rent. But this is a city where you need to have a budget. Like hundred hundred percent you need to have a budget. You just have to pick your priorities. Mm -hmm. Like, do you like to go out to eat? Do you like to go to bars? Let's just add up <laughs> really quickly here. Like, <laughs> If you go out to eat, there's like the SF mandate that pays for, I think it's employees at the restaurants, like health insurance. Like there's a lot of like little things like that, which like fees, I, yeah. Yeah, fees that are added on. So, or like, even like Uber or like DoorDash, like, you know, mm -hmm. your transportation, like you have to pick fees. and choose. It's like, do I want an Uber to work or do I want to take the bus? Like you definitely just have to make those like priorities. Yeah, and just yeah. decide what you value most. Yeah, so as I said, like it's so easy to drop $60 on a dinner or um, however much money on a night out and like not realize it. So I, I've definitely learned how to budget in this city. <laughs> With that being said though, there's a lot to do that doesn't cost money. Totally. Perfect segue into our next topic. <laughs> what was the next topic? Things, Things to do to for do. fun. And uh, most of them are free. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, like, yeah, going out and going to restaurants is obviously, but there's a lot of parks. Yeah, Jim Bay, huge especially huge. during COVID, that was a big thing. Obviously, it's free. Like, you just go to the park and like yeah. bring whatever you want, just hang out. And like Fort Mason is more like a party park vibe, so you kind of go there and you drink with your friends. And there's usually a ton of people. There's like a, people playing music. You can go to Mission Dolores Park where. You know, you can usually bring some like a burrito you picked up and kind of hang out. There's usually music going on. Like we have a whole vlog on that where Emma ripped her pants that you could watch. No, um, you did. You did. Yeah. Oh. There's just a ton of parks. So like if it's a beautiful day or even if it's like 60 degrees, we'll go bring our blanket and kind of just hang out. Um, I would say that's kind of like what people do on like Saturdays and Sundays mostly. Yeah. Like. The farmers, farmers market. market. There's so many different ones. Like, yeah, we love the Fort Mason Farmers Market. We go to the Embarcadero one. Um, there's the one in North Beach. Oh yeah, the little small one. Those are really the only ones that we've been to, but I'm sure that there's a ton of other ones within the city, and they usually have a lot of cute little stands and like flowers and produce and all those different things. Other free things that people do during the day, like there's a lot of hikes with really cool views and like a lot of them lead to the beach. So if you want to do like Lansen or what was it like Baker Beach hike we did. Mm -hmm. um, or you can drive to Marin, do a hike there. Very close to the water. So I think like even just doing little like during the week, like we'll go on walks and- Walk to the beach. Walk to the beach sunsets. or the water. Or just like during the day taking a little like walking. Yeah, I don't know. And honestly, we do a lot of like rooftop stuff and yeah. it's, it's just cause we have a rooftop and some of our friends do as well. So we'll like have drinks on the roof or watch sunset. And that's kind of just like a fun, easy thing to do during the week. Or if you want to have a chill night on like a Friday or Saturday. Or like a pregame. A pregame on the roof. Yeah. A lot of really cool fun stuff. <laughs> Last but not least, <laughs> the San Francisco dating scene. What was Emma's face reaction to that? <laughs> Yikes. So, I don't really know how much we have to add here. I feel like <laughs> it's a very- <laughs> Nothing to add here. <laughs> Cricket. It's a very bumble, hinge heavy city. I feel like if I'm walking home from the gym on a Thursday night and I'm walking through Union Street, there are so many people on dates. Like you can just tell their first date, like, 
so that's like a huge yeah. thing is like going for drinks on a Thursday as like a bumble date or hinge date and I would say that's to my knowledge what most people I know do yeah I think it's super dating app heavy mm -hmm. unless you like meet somebody you know at a bar like organically through friends but I feel like that's don't count on that <laughs> like <laughs> that's helpful I, I think that's wishful thinking everyone we know who are in relationships honestly met through either hinge we know a yes, crazy so amount of people people. who met their significant other on hinge work or mutual work friends. what do you mean work <laughs> who meets their work like, a ton of people. Isn't that an yeah. HR nightmare? Name like, one person. Like not, Isn't that like HR nightmare? Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel like a lot of people meet on work. Uh, meet on work. You maybe. mentioned one person. Isn't that, like, how do you do that with HR? Like, you're not, you're that, not allowed to date like, like, Regardless, <laughs> dating apps. Yeah, one person. <laughs> so listen. I would say don't count maybe on Maybe one work. person. I would say maybe don't, don't bet on I wouldn't work. say work. Okay, well, They're regardless, not weird, dating apps. Not else. weird, but I think that's, like, not... Wouldn't like anyone's ideal, that's not like an ideal situation. Like I feel so scared. Regardless, dating <laughs> apps are where you'll probably meet most people. Most or where most people here meet their significant others. If you go on a <laughs> dating app date, just know that there's a very high chance you'll run into them again in the city. Yeah, it's a small city. At Jackson. <laughs> yeah, especially if you frequent the same bars as them. Anyways, I think that's it. I think I think we covered. Did we miss anything? I'm tired. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. If you're looking to move to San Francisco or you just really like San Francisco, I don't really know. <laughs> if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye. You guys end like video calls in the whole way? I know, I know. I know. I'm like, oh, yeah. We had too much so wine. Really like, like, oh, bye. Like, oh, bye. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I've never done that. You don't say it. You could buy on your call. No, I say bye and I hang up. <laughs>